Across the Park podcast is proud to be sponsored by Globe Gas and Heating. For the best kitchen and bathroom renovations, boiler servicing and repair, and central and underfloor heating in the Northwest, head over to globecentralheating.com and quote Across the Park for a free quote. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Across the Park podcast. It's that time of the week again. It's our opposition preview or the away plan preview in this instance. It's a to be joined by good friends of mine and colleague Mark Irwin, big Newcastle fan. How is he, Mark? Hello, mate. Yeah, good, thanks. Yeah, good. Appreciate, appreciate you coming on, Mark. So we usually get a, a fan podcast on, but again, knowing Mark as well as I do, I thought it would be better value and better than um, entertainment for you guys to get him on so hopefully he doesn't disappoint no pressure mark no pressure no pressure is this your first appearance on a podcast mark uh yes it is i yeah. glad you could be <laughs> me first mate <laughs> <laughs> well that's the only time you're ever going to be saying that to me I think. <laughs> <laughs> anyway so again for anyone who's unfamiliar with the show if we've got any newcastle fans perhaps watching us this is focused on the newcastle perspective of this game so we're previewing the game. We have asked Mark if he'd give us some of his time to do a review after the match on Sunday. But we'll see how the result is, Mark. I know what you're like, if there's anyone. No, I'm not be as bad as you, mate. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm hoping, hoping it's a win, so I'll definitely be tuning in on Sunday. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll see. We're, we're, we're a bit more used to defeat these days than you are. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes, see how you take that. Anyway, it's, um, it's Saturday night, obviously, the late kick off the 5.30. Um, before we get into the game itself, just generally on Newcastle so far, mate, how have you, have you been pleased with the start? It seems so, to me from the outside, like a decent start. To be honest, we've like, it's probably the best start we've made in over a decade. But um, mm. I feel like we're in a kind of like a, a false position. Um, up until, so prior to the Man City game last week, I would say we're in a false position. And that... Uh, that hiding off Fulham was coming, so the three-one defeat of Fulham that was that was long overdue in my eyes. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is um, it just what you just haven't been playing well and you've been picking no, up? No, we just we, we, prior to the Man City game we weren't playing well at all. Um, mm. Joel Linton seemed miles off it. Uh, Is that seem isolated? Um, we weren't at the normal high press game. Just didn't mm. seem at the races, but we seemed to be grinding out results. So like, kind of, so again, like, kind of made me look like. It's like kind of a false position where we are at the minute. It's surprising that I mean, again, this is why we do these opposition um, previews. Really, is you, you look at the league position, you think you know, as you just said, then I didn't realise it was your best start in so long. But looking at yeah. the table, you would have took that position this at this point of the season, wouldn't you? Oh, I would have snapped your hands off. Yeah, um, we're kind of slow starters, and um, even when we got like the top four for Champions League, we started slow. We will kind of pick up towards the end of the season. But um, we're a bit like you at the minute. We, we can't keep a clean sheet, so I'm, I'm well, pretty sure you're well aware of that. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't quite put you in the same category as us yet. But, uh, but, but well, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. I'm kind of hoping you go two up on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> steady on, steady on. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, just again, stick on, stick on yourselves for now. So you, from your perspective, you maybe haven't been playing well. I didn't catch the City game on 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 Saturday, but I'm assuming. You're not including the City game in that? Seems like no, it was I'm a decent included. performance. So, we're well, kind of back to the old best for the City game. Um, mm. Like high press, relentless running. Um, obviously, Isaac was out, so we're, we're kind of relied on Gordon playing as like a, a false number nine, if you were. Um, but him, Murphy, Barnes, the, as a front three, work well pressing and putting City under pressure. Yeah, and, and, and listen, that, I, th- I think from our perspective, that'll be the biggest fear for Everton fans on, on Saturday is the pace that you've got on the break and, and in behind. You know, with our back four, particularly uh, if Brantwaite um, isn't fit, which we, which we believe we, um, we, he won't be. He's uh, yeah, picked up I've a thigh, a thigh on GM Chain. Yeah, I've seen that. He's a doubt, isn't he? I mean, uh, uh, listen, if he's a doubt, there's no doubt what the game plan on Saturday will be. Um, I, think, I think even... With uh, with Brantwaite, but without Brantwaite, we'd be sitting very deep, which mm-hmm. again it probably gives us a little bit more of a chance against pace. But you know, at some point at Goodison, particularly with most of the game being under the lights, the fans are going to be right behind us. It, it, it's going to be difficult for the 
the players to probably sit in there for the whole, you know, the whole 90 minutes. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a quick look at the stats before I come on. Um, so, Everton have only lost three of the last 20 at Goodison against Newcastle. So, the stats don't lie. So, it's, it's looking good for you in that in that respect. It is, but I guess you look back at the, um, with the exception of the, the Keegan era, you know, we've probably been fairly close in the league, haven't we? I mean, there may be one season that you've been ahead, one, one we've been behind. Obviously, the last few years has spun since the since your new owners come in, but I think with the exception of those three three or four maybe years, um, yeah. I, I don't think there's ever been a huge amount of difference between the two clubs. Obviously, infamously, I think we've we've both been missing out on trophies for quite some time, and that's that's been to the, uh, the amusement to the rest of the Premier League. But I think when I generally look back, I, I've never looked at your team, with the exception again of that that era, and and to you and your had Shearer, um, and thought you know we're playing Newcastle, we're going to get beat. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, definitely on the trophy aspect of it as well. Um, obviously we're we're desperate to get our first trophy in a long time. But after after the start of the season, then as you say, it's been your best start, and I I always think it's encouraging if you're picking up points and you're not playing well. Generally, as a fan base, are you optimistic about? You know what is what are the expectations this season? So, for, for obviously, you get some fickle fans who go, "Yeah, we need to be top four. But I think a normal fan, uh, top top six, we have with a six top six finish, and it's pretty realistic expectations. Yeah, um, yeah I'd, like, I'd say so. Yeah. The, like no disrespect to Everton, but these are the type of games that you need to be winning if you want to finish in the top six. Well, well, that was going to be my next question. To be fair, Mark, because you know you've obviously just pinpointed the record that that you've had at Goodison. However, as a fan, although you just brought it up, and I think you've probably done that knowing you were coming on here, I don't think you generally go, "Okay, we haven't won here for a while, therefore we don't expect to win." Is generally the the, the perception of most Newcastle fans this weekend that this is a game that we should be winning? Yeah. So, that, so obviously speaking amongst like me mates and stuff, this is this is the perception we should be going to. A game like this to win, um, it's, even though we've got Isaac out, um, mm. still we've got a fairly strong squad going down. Um, Pope's an injury doubt, so he didn't play midweek in the League Cup because he's got a swollen knee. Um, De Bruyne's actually injured as well, so we might have that. Uh, is it Flakademos? The, the yeah, 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 like the the one where we've took a backhand and done a dodgy deal to get around the PSR. <laughs> Um, so we'll see what he's about on Saturday if he starts. But um, so we're pretty much off an injury off John Ruddy starting if he gets injured. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there's a couple of a couple of players that I want to speak to you about. Firstly, on on your side, a player who, who, who obviously you signed from Everton. I know when we went and watched the last game at St James's Park, we spoke quite a bit about about Anthony Gordon. Mm-hmm. It's fair to say he's been something of a re- revelation since signing for you. Yeah, he's been excellent. Um, he kind of like epitomizes what we're about. So when I mentioned before about the high press, relentless running, he leads by example. So he, at home, he gets the crowd going. Um, he's just, I think he's he sprint, he sprints per game or one of the highest in the prem. Um, he's just full tilt every game and like literally, like I said, epitomizes what we're about: the high press and relentless running. Well, we spoke a little bit about it on our podcast this week. Well, I did really. I brought it up, and I think it's going to be really interesting this one for Anthony Gordon because the, the game last season at Goodison, he didn't start. He came on late, to give away the ball for a goal. Um, it depends on how this game goes. It goes almost shape, almost the the the, um, the feeling every time he comes back to Goodison because I know I, I kind of a. Uh, Relate it or compare it to Raheem Sterling coming back to Anfield. Yeah. He gets dog abuse and he's never ever turns up, or he hasn't when he's played for City. Now, yeah. Anthony Gordon, I think there's a similar sort of emotion for Anthony, from Anthony Gordon and from the fans where, you know, we're going to get on top of him. He's going to be determined to try and give it back to the fans somewhat. I think it'll be really interesting how, how Anthony Gordon comes out of this game on, it on is, Saturday. That's, that, that's what I was thinking myself, but is he going to be determined or is he going to hide? Is he going to step up? Because He's number nine. Yeah. There's no hiding. No. So it's either is he going to step up and actually give it a go, or is he going to go into hiding? And, and that's it. It is one of them. I, th- I think either way, um, 
it, it's just it's just whether he produces something in this game again. I, I be listen. He's going to start this time. I think last time there was a bit of a willy start, when he start. As you just said, he, he's been playing as the false nine. You know, he, he got the the goal against City, yeah. albeit a penalty. But from what I gather, he, he you know he, he played pretty well. There's no doubt about it. He starts this game, and as you say, it, it's whether he's going to t- try and take that game by the scruff of the neck and, and be determined. I'm going to say right now, uh, for anyone who's watching, I would get your money on an Anthony Gordon yellow card without yeah, doubt. I think. I, well, he, I think I, yeah. Go on. He, he got sent off before he played at home, didn't he? So like, yeah, he's been protected quite a bit, I think, as well. So I think he was on the he came off the bench from the one four one, like yeah. the 86, 87 minute. So he's, mm-hmm. but uh, there's definitely no hiding for this one. Yeah, and I, I, again, I think it's really fascinating. The other player I want to ask you about it plays for us, but he's just a player who you just seem to enjoy, you know, golden and. Oh, I want me. I don't know who you're going to say. We're, we're best friend, Pickford. Oh my God! It, it, honestly, I said to you last time we, you know, again when we went to the the, the last game at St James's, I, I'm not, I'm not listening. Everyone who watches or listens to this podcast knows that I'm not Jordan's big, Jordan's biggest fan, despite the fact he's been a brilliant servant for the club. This, that, and the other, great goalie. I, I just despise his antics, and it's this game which brings out, it seems, the best and worst than him. He, he can play like, in great like performances. The occasion gets to him, doesn't it? It does. It, yeah. Are the dinosaurs going to turn up? The T Rex is going to turn up in your end this this I want to be completely honest. I was just looking at my kids' uh, toy box to put one on. Yeah, just to have <laughs> to, to play, but uh, but I'm not low on myself. But um, yeah, without fail, those blow you up T Rexes will be there. Uh, yeah, it, and it, 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 it's it's mad. It's it, it, you know it, it baffles me to be honest. Um, I say it baffles me. It doesn't baffle me what you're doing, but it baffles me that he still seems to. To get involved in it, it's like, come on, you're an England international. You know, you've 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 played X amount of game, professional games, yeah. And and he and he still, when he gets on that pitch against Newcastle, he acts like a 16 year old in the pub. It's it's like fair enough, lose your head once, but not every game against Newcastle. Like you, well, you have oh, to draw a line under it at some point. I said, well, I well, mean, well, actually, one. Sorry, I mate. mean, to be fair, like the, the fans are relentless towards him, as I would imagine the Everton fans are going to be. Towards Gordon on Saturday, it just depends how they react on that day, isn't it? That's it. It, it is, and as as I was going to say, then I'm just hoping that he can let us, uh, you know, his, his hands and his feet do the talking, and, and just keep his mouth shut and keep keep his hands away from the Newcastle end. I'm glad you said hands and not arms. <laughs> <laughs> but it, just onto the, the the actual game and away from from those two players and the general game itself. It, what what do Everton fans or players, if you if you were kind of warning the players, what do we need to look out for in terms uh, of Newcastle's threats? I pro- well, when you mention Sin, you're gonna you probably sit deep. But to be fair, probably the the mismatch for me or our best opportunity would probably be Ashley Barnes against Ashley Young. Um, so I'm hoping Young starts at right back for Barnes. I'd- Again, get this on your air accumulator, Gary. So it'd be like free money. Barnes to assist a score on Saturday. <laughs> wow, yeah, I'm. I'm. I, I tell you, what, I don't think Ashley Young will be looking forward to that battle, let alone the fans. Um, another one probably who's going to be a nap for a yellow card as well. Um, but yeah, that that that's a battle. Uh, I don't think there's any question who's going to win that one. Oh, but you know what? The last two weeks, and I, I, I'm probably the famous last words. He's played pretty well, Ashley Young, but he's. He's in. Um, we haven't got many options there at the moment. Seamus Coleman's still out injured. Um, Nathan Patterson has been back in training and has played a game for the a couple of games, I think, for the 21. So he may well be in contention, but knowing Sean Dyke, he very much seems to prefer the, the experience when he when he can get it. So, have, yeah. how old is he now? About 39, 40? 38, 38, I think. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, he looks every every inch of that now, or he looks every uh, every day of that 38. He's going so, to look about forty-five when Barnes puts. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, I mean, I mean to be fair, he's a top player, Ashley Barnes. I really rate him, and I know. I, I think credit to you when it, when we went to the game at St James, you were waxing lyrical about him, and I think at the time he was probably just coming back into the team. But for you, is he is he one of your biggest threats, Ashley Barnes? Uh, yeah. So if Ashley Young stays fit, like there's no. And known certain terms, he he could push for an England call up if he stays mm. fit. He just opens doors. He's 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 productive in what he does. He's direct. Um, but I probably sit. 
I'd probably say on Saturday he's our biggest threat, especially yeah, with yeah. putting in the mix about Gordon potentially going hiding and not being up for it. Um, Jacob Murphy will probably start on the right-hand side. He had a good game against Man City. Um, his lovely shithousery tactics like rings well with the fans, but um, <laughs> we've got we're midfield strong, so it'll probably be yeah. Joe Linton, uh, Gameres, Tenali. Um, with Joe, uh, probably our weak spot will probably be the our left hand side with Hall and Burn down that side, but Joe Linton normally mm. offers a bit of protection that side. Um, but yeah, Barnes for me on Saturday, he's he's probably going to be key man for us. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it concerns me, the midfields. I think you're particularly strong in there when, you, when you've got everyone fit. I mean, Bruno Gimmarash, I'm a massive fan of. Um, and yeah, Joe, Long, Joe Linton's such a physical presence in there. And I, I think it's an area of the pitch that, that we do tend to struggle to get the right balance in terms of we're either too defensive or, or, or too open. I, th- I think Saturday, given where your strengths are, I think we'll definitely go defensive and probably have a couple of hold midfielders in there as opposed to, you know... Um, what one or two attacking players in there? It, the opposite side of the coin, Mark. Is if you if you were to give Everton fans any encouragement, where can you get at this Newcastle team? Yeah, I would, the left hand side. Yeah, it'd be our left hand side. Um, mm. Hall and Burn, maybe try and isolate Burn, put uh, mm. get AC up against them. Um, potentially, if you've got Harrison starting on the right wing, was it Lindstrom went off injured last? I'll get. Who- yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'll probably be Harrison, and given the impact that he has when he come on, you know, he come on and we scored two goals in ten minutes, and he, he one of them was an assist from him. And um, the pace for us comes from Ill- Illman and Zai with the with the ball at his feet. I don't think he'll he's unlikely to be on the right hand side and only drifts over to the left. Yeah. Um, him and Calvert Lewin are probably the only players in our team that, that we can that we that have got genuine pace. Yeah, I'd probably say Lewin. Try and isolate Burn with mm. Calvert Lewin, um, and maybe. Get up, get up our left hand side. We're, we're pretty strong on the right. Uh, Murphy tends to help out and sit back. It'll probably be Trippiel probably start on Saturday, but then Livermento, like they kind of like he'll come on about 70 75. Um, mm. roll. um that's what will probably happening. I, I like Livermento. Does he not start the season in as the first choice right back, or was it because Trippier was still kind of recovering from injury or whatever? But yeah, it's like there's a lot going on behind the scenes and he's personal. Mm. Um, his house is up for sale. Um, his wife's putting things, well, his wife who's left him, I think, putting stuff on social media. Um, yeah, that's I think his head's all over the shop, to be honest. But um, he kind of like complained that he wasn't getting enough game time, but he had a lot going on behind the scenes. Mm. Um, but for me, Livermento is... Like last season, he was our most informed fullback. Um, I, I like Livermento. I think, he's a, I think he's a very good player, and I think it, really? as you're getting, I think if it wasn't for the almost the reputation and the um, and the other stuff that that Trippy can bring in terms of set plays, I, I think I think he's a better I think he's a better right back than Trippy. If I'm honest, yeah, he's long he's a long term solution mm-hmm. without a doubt. Um, Any um, uh, what he's like from set plays is that you know both attacking and defending. Um, I'd probably say we don't, we don't seem to score many corners, so you might be all right that in that respect. Mm. Um, Q, Q, you scored them two goals, yeah. Corners, that's, that's what I'm hoping for. Remember when you said <laughs> that? Um, but yeah, we're pretty strong defensively as well. Um, on corners, um, we've got we've got some we've got a big set of players, so we've got like Byrne, Shark, and yeah, Joe Linton. Um, Tonali's quite decent, like mm. under the um. But yeah, we're pretty good on the set players. Just reminded me actually, Tonali obviously just coming back from his ban. He, on another podcast that I'm that I'm part of, um, I got asked to tip like five players to look out for this season. Tonali was one of them for the simple reason that I, I was, you know, I was excited to see him come to the Premier League. I, I enjoyed watching him at Milan. Obviously, he's 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 been out for, for reasons that we're all aware of. Um, he's now back in there. How's he? How's he fitted back in? Yeah, well. He's, he's he's a baller for me. He's, mm. he's 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 very very tidy player. Good on the ball. Uh, he was back in the Italy squad uh, a couple weeks mm. ago. I don't know if you've seen that flick he did to set up Demarco's goal. Played uh, two two well played two full games. Didn't he for Italy as well? And, uh, and I was surprised to not see him just come straight back into the team after that. 
He was on the bench really when he first came back. I know. So what you've got, what you've got to think is, although we've had him, he's never really played. And Joel and mm. Esh and Tenali haven't really played much together. So to no. try to find the right balance on how them three can work together. Um, they're, all, they're all pretty similar. Yeah, um, they are, yeah. yeah. It's just finding who's going to push, who's going to be the more attacking of the three. Um, probably, ideally, would be Gamerash. Um, But then Joe Linton maybe sit a little bit deeper, protecting that weak side on yeah. the left. Yeah, again, the, the names are really off me. It's making me less and less confident about this game. Um, but anyway, <laughs> let's, let's go to the let's go to the chase mark. Give us a give us a position. Well, considering we both can't keep a clean sheet, uh, I'd probably say Newcastle to win two or three one. Two or three one. I'm gonna go with two two. Uh, I agree with you on the clean sheet front. I don't think it's gonna be a two two where it's gonna be neck and neck. I think you know we we may maybe get the goals on a. Um, a more of a, a scrappy front, but um, I, I definitely think you can be got her, um, as you've alluded to with the lack of clean sheets. But um, yeah, I, I fancy us, and I mean, un, we've been uncharacteristic this season in terms of us getting goals fairly regularly, but conceding at the other end. Um, definitely fancy us to get one, and, and I, I think we could we could manage to. It. But with the it's out over Brantway. I think if he plays, it's fair to say he's not going to be one hundred percent fit. So, yeah, um, I'm not. I'm not sure we're qu- going to be quite as um, as strong at the back. So I'm going to go for two two, and I'd probably take two two to be fair. Yeah, I think obviously I joked before, like saying I hope you go two 0 but um, I think <laughs> the way we're set up, if we score one, we're set up for the counter big time. Yeah, I I, I fear for us if you score first. I, th- I think we've got to get the first goal to be yeah. fair. Um, and as you as you as you joked about, we we've, we've not been great at holding leads, but then we come back from a goal behind last week. So yeah. I, I definitely agree with you. There's, I think there's definitely goals in the game. Um, I, I I wouldn't rule us out. I mean, as much as I've I've wrote us off in terms of you being strong and it being a game I'm I'm not looking forward to. I'm certainly not looking at it saying we, we've got no chance of winning or or, or I'm dreading the game. I think there's always something a bit special, and yours you will be the same. The St James is under the lights. It's just so yeah, much. Totally different. And I'll, obviously, the first half's not going to be quite under the lights, but the second half will. And I think the second half generally, in, you know, in most home games, is where the fans tend to get into the game and, and get behind the team. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I'm still cautiously optimistic. I mean, that was a big win for you last week. Um, Massive. Newcastle have got this excellent knack of hitting teams just coming into form. We seem to like. Hit a team when they hit form. Um, we're never like. You did. What? Yeah, you, you did last season. To be fair, we we, we played just in that purple patch where we smashed yeah. it. Good, it's been three 0 I think three 0 it was yeah. Um, and it was not far off. I think it was about. Oh, it was actually December. I think it was a couple of weeks before Christmas. We played it at Goodison, and you're right. That was literally when we just come into form. Yeah. But um, that's our listen, special that. secret talent. Play teams are just as they come into form or. We'll help. We'll, there's no way we'll help continue a bad run. We'll end a bad run. That's like yeah, well, that, that, that's us as well. Five yeah. minutes in, Anthony Gordon red card for an elbow on, on <laughs> Michael Keane. Michael Keane goes off injured. Brantway comes on because he's 90% fit anyway, and we win 3 0. What, what a day that what evening that would be. Well, I'll not see you at work next week if you put a 10 <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, Mark, I'll, I'll leave you to it. It's, it. We're recording quite late on a, on Thursday evening. Really appreciate your time, mate. Hopefully, you can find some time for us on, on Sunday after after we beat you. Um, and you maybe have a can of lager at the, at, at the side as well, just to on yourselves. Uh, well, maybe, depending on how, how, what the time is when you call. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice one, Mark. Um, again, thanks for coming on. And, yeah, no worries, mate. Uh, apart from this weekend, mate, of course, best of luck for the rest of the season. Yeah, of course. Same to you. Take it easy. Yes, mate.